Brian Curlers here, Building an Empire, and today, my network marketing friends, we're going to be going over the age-old dilemma, the question I get from networkers every day, it seems like, width versus depth. Do I build wide or do I build deep? And the answer is yes. Okay, there's all kinds of different compensation plans out there. We've got binaries, we've got force matrices, we've got unilevel, we've got differential. So obviously, there's going to be some different nuances to my answer. But I'm going to share with you the philosophy on building depth versus width that has served me very well for the last 25 years. And I'm telling you, I've helped people maximize their compensation plans and build long standing, long lasting lifetime income streams because they got this philosophy right. So why versus deep? Here, first of all, that's you. You're going to build a downline. It's either going to be wide or it's going to be deep. Now, let me give you an example. Some people say you have to go wide, keep all the overrides as close up to you as you possibly can have. So what does that look like? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, you go as wide as you want. Now, if you recruit eight people, 10 people, 12 people, 20 people, and they're all wide, I call that you're a mile wide and an inch deep. That may not serve you very well. It's a question I want to ask you. This is a philosophical question because it's all about your philosophies are going to dictate your behavior. So if you feel like, oh, I need to maximize my income. If I keep everybody front line to me, nobody else is in between us cutting off any overrides. So that's best for me. Well, here's the problem. If you've got, let's say, 20 people on your front line and they're all making, let's say, 500 bucks a month, the next wind that comes along and blows could blow them all out of the business. Why? Because they're only making 500 bucks a month. Why are they sticking around? So that's why I say you don't want to be completely wide. What I would encourage you to do instead is do this. If you build, let's say, three legs, and as you're personally recruiting, instead of, the, instead of putting them out here, instead, what if you put that person down here and your next recruit put them down here and your next recruit put them down here and your next recruit put them down here and then so on guess what happens you burn a house by lighting it from the bottom the basement and burn up so if this person down here starts taking off and they're recruiting this big 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 army down here guess what happens you got one two three four five and use six people that are excited about the explosion that's happening down here. Now, in your scenario, if, the, if you put this person over here and this person starts catching fire, who's, who's motivated by that? One person. So what has served me very well in my entire network marketing career is that I build in depth. Here's what happens. This explosion's happening down here. One, two, three, four, five people that are between me and that budding organization those five people are anchored in the business. Why? They're, not, they're probably not going to quit and walk away from a business that's growing in spite of them, in spite of them not really leaning into building their business. Now, hopefully, they go out there and get a second and third leg and they start really expanding their organization, picking up more, spreading their overrides. But the depth in your organization is going to anchor people in. What you want to really remember, though, is that if you get somebody hot in your business and they're on fire and they're making great money, that's great. I always tell everybody that you're never done recruiting somebody. When somebody signs an, an agreement to join your business, they've done nothing more than signed a written permission slip for you to keep recruiting them. Because until this person here is making a full-time income off their network marketing business, they're this close to quitting at any given time. A problem can arise in the company or in their business or one of the people can quit and they go right back to going full time with whatever else they were already doing. So you want to make sure you got people making full time money, but you also want to have overlapping leadership. You want to have like a solid leader here, a solid leader here. And when you've got three leaders down in a leg, that leg is solid. Now people say, well, I, that leg's done. Let me go work over here. It's never really done. Well. If you've got people that are making six and seven figure incomes for a long period of time in a leg, then that leg is pretty much solid. Like I've got a leg right now in my organization 
It's as solid as you can possibly get. I mean, it's in mountain, it's a boulder, it's not moving, going anywhere. But here's the thing, you get a couple legs in your organization that have real structure and strength and depth. I would rather have three people, one, two, three people that are making $10,000 a month themselves. That means they're here with me, they're not going anywhere. Three people making $10,000 a month versus 50 people frontline to me, each making $500 a month. Width is for show, depth is for dough. I've recruited over 1,600 people personally into my network marketing business. If I put all those people frontline to me, I probably would be making very little money right now because that means I've got, I'm the go-to person for 1,600 people. It's called building myself into a job. I didn't get into network marketing to build myself into a job. I got in, my, my mentor years ago, he said, Brian, it's not how quick you get into a network marketing company and build yourself into a job, it's how quick you can get in, set up a structure with some leadership so that you can get out one day and have the money follow you for the rest of your life. Isn't that what you guys want? So that's why I'm saying you don't want to have a whole lot of people that are all direct reports to you. So as I recruited those 1,600 people, I was sticking them down here, sticking them down here, sticking them down here. And I, my organization now goes uh, 90, 100, 110, 120 levels deep. Some of my biggest earners in my organization are 30 and 40 levels deep below me in my organization. And because my compensation plan will pay me down that far, I get overrides on everybody in my entire organization. Now, if you have a compensation plan that only pays seven levels on a unit level, like you don't get paid below the seventh level, in that scenario, you're not going to take a new recruit instead of putting them out here, you're not going to put them on your 12th level. You might put that person on your second or third level because you still want to strengthen a few people that are up close to you by building strength and building volume and building a fire underneath of them. The more people you can help make money in network marketing, the more you're gonna be able to put your head on your pillow at night knowing that when you wake up tomorrow, next year, and 10, 20 years from now, that your business and your residual check is still gonna be there. That's why when people say, do I go wide or do, or do you go deep? It's yes. You wanna make, make sure you got a handful wide, build depth, and then the last thing I'll share with you, I created what I call the replacement theory. And, and that, that replacement thing is if I've got, you know, you know, people that are at the highest level at, in these three legs, I will go out and start a fourth. And I'll build that one down and get that one rocking. And they got, you know, three leaders, one under another. And then I might go out and get another one. So, yes, I do have a couple dozen legs. I'm not only three-legged. I've got a couple dozen out of the 1,600 recruits. Because as you build strength, it will become, these, these, these teams will become solid. They will become self-sufficient. You can go out there and pick up more spread, get an increase in your overrides on the downline volume by adding some new legs. So I hope today, guys, that what I just share with you right now will once and for all solve this question that's probably been plaguing you. Where will I put people when I recruit them? Do I go wide or do I go deep? It's not an exact science. All compensation plans are different. It's more of an art. You work where deserved, not where needed. If you put a recruit under somebody who's not going to be any, any help, then you basically just put them front line, you're doing all the work. If you put somebody under somebody who's solid and is a leader, now they've got somebody who's going to do a lot of the heavy lifting with them while you're on the beach. See you at the top.